the shipwreck arcana trapped in a drowned world you and your allies are doomed or are you using a mystical deck and healthy dose dose of logic you can predict each other's fates and escape unscathed so what you're looking at here is arcana cards so there's no board per se it is uh well it's a bunch of arcana cards and then we have fate tokens which are these 21 tokens that are here they're actually going to be in this bag i just kept them out here because hey hey it looks pretty but also to show you that there are three of each this is important to know that there are three of each now this game is a co-op we either win together or lose together i am usually anti-co-op however i am pro logic puzzles so that trumped the co-op nature of the game and here we go so we have four uh cards out here uh we have the hour hours card as well as the other four arcana cards and these four are randomly selected from the deck and we just have the base deck is all we're going to be playing with today i'll go over the everything on the cards here in detail uh there everybody has their own line token set which all this is is visual reminders and helpers for the other players on your team which is well everybody at the table all right we have a doom marker and a score marker goal of the game being to get the score marker to seven before the doom marker gets the seven and we either win or lose according to the rules we're playing the easy version and i don't know that it's easy because the doom marker starts at zero which is where that is apparently the further up it goes it becomes so normal it would start at two we found that this was hard enough in our first game so we're gonna <laughs> leave it there uh yeah my bad all right listen so we played the percentages and we were wrong right right we we did the positive ev and didn't work out didn't. so there you go totally didn't so the arcana cards here the front of each card has a, a number of different things of information so first off at the top you have the name of the card so the rider or the stranger as you can see there you have the ability here then you have the ability text and this is going to be where the logic puzzle part of this game comes in we're and i'll explain this in more detail but obviously these are the rules for the card down below it and then at the very bottom is the duration of a card it can be anywhere i think they go up to three i've seen as few as one there might be one or two that actually go up to four the duration on this then over on the flip side is the faded side of the card basically if this number of pips is reached whether it's one two three four however many it will get flipped over and it's a one-time use ability for a faded card all right as you can see there so how do you actually play the game well on a player's turn, they are the active player. Again, it's a co-op. We are trying to collectively get this green marker all the way up to seven, which means we need to succeed seven times before we fail some number of times, okay? So what's going to happen, first off, is all of these 21 tokens are actually going to be in the bag, and whoever the active player is is going to randomly draw two of the tiles. And let's say, for argument's sake, the two tiles that, if I'm the first player, I drew these. These are secret to me and only me, although, I'll be honest, we're going to let you guys play along from my point of view. Meaning, when it's my turn, I will show you these, and then you will have to try and puzzle this out along with the other players, or from my point of view. And then when it's not my turn, you won't know what the two fate uh, tiles are so you have to logic play along as well so what you're going to do is if you have one of these left over from a previous turn you're going to only draw one up to two basically is what it is then you're going to play one of those two faded tower of fate tiles to one of the five available cards the card the hours card on the left says if you are unable to play on any of the other cards play it here okay but otherwise 
based on the numbers that are on there and some other rules that are actually depicted on the cards, you're going to play a tile that gives your team the best and most amount of information. So let's go through some, an example of this. Let's say I drew the two and the five. So here, if the sum of your fates, meaning the two tiles, is seven, eight, or nine, play one of them here. Okay, well, everyone knows that they range from one to seven. So if I played, say, the two there, then they would know that I have a five, six, or seven. So at that point, if I did play the two here, they would talk amongst themselves and say, hey, would you please flip over your one through four? Because they know that those are un this tile cannot be one of those. Again, it's a logic puzzle. So that's what would happen if I played there. Then here, if one of your fates matches a visible fate, well, none of these would be visible. And there are none out here, so could not play either of these to that card. Play one of your fates here. If you do, say whether your remaining fate is higher or lower than this one. Okay, well, if we played the two here, we would have to say it's higher. If we played the five there, we would have to say it's lower. So I don't know that that would be better than playing onto that card. And then this one, if one of your fates is exactly two more or two less than the other, play one of them here. So if it were two and four, I could play that there, which I would play the two because I couldn't go too lower, which means they would know that it's a four. And that is the whole goal of this game. So in this case, I might do something like this. There. Then they, your opponent, or you, your team, can ch tell you to flip these over. You are never allowed to flip over your own unless you are asked to by the other players. And the other players are going to discuss freely amongst themselves, and maybe the peanut gallery, of what to flip over. So these four would be flipped over. So they then know that it's a five, six, or seven, but they only have a 33% chance to guess right. So now they have a decision. They being everyone but the active player. They can either make a prediction, i.e. guess what the hidden one is, or not. Okay? If they choose not to make a prediction, then they're going to go on to just fade. The fade step. And the fade step says at the end of each turn, check to see if any Arcana cards fade. What does that mean? Well, there are three symbols down here, and you'll notice the number of pips that are on these tiles. It is the same as what are on these tiles. So there's either one, two, or three pips. If I had played a seven here, then that would be three pips. Or if on a subsequent turn, if they don't guess, somebody plays that there, it then fades and it would flip over. And what happens when it fades, it will come down like so, or maybe we'll put it up here, you get the idea. And on a future turn, this will be a one-time use kind of bonus for not having guessed, okay? So that's what happens if a player chooses not to, if a player chooses not to guess or predict the other players. Mm -hmm. However, the downside to doing so, if going back to our example, if it had been like this, the doom counter will advance two steps and this will then fade and now you get a benefit. And then we will play another card over here to replace that card. It'll be the next player's turn. So that's if you choose not to predict, okay? But let's say they were feeling uh, frisky and they said, you know what? We know it's only a five, six, or seven. We're gonna guess something, one of those three numbers. Well, they make a single prediction. They agree upon what number they're going to guess that it is. And it's, it's a statement about a single number. So, hey, we say, we predict that it's going to be a five or a six or a seven. Then they go into the resolution. If it's correct, you're quote unquote freed from your fate and then score one point, easy enough. That's if it's correct. If it's not, then the doom track advances one. So the doom track is going to advance one or two steps. 
if you're wrong or you choose not to guess. Mm -hmm. If you choose not to guess, it advances two, but you get the benefit of the faded card. If you do choose to guess and you're wrong, it advances one. Then after that, whatever's left in your hand goes back into the bag, and then at the beginning of your next turn, you will draw two more fates. If, if you choose not, or your uh, allies choose not to guess, in that case, keep the fate that you have hidden face down, do not reset your line numbers, and then just draw another one the next turn. There you go. Mm -hmm. And we continue until one of these reaches seven. That's pretty much the gist of the game. Again, it's a giant logic puzzle. Mm -hmm. And it's not just where can you play, it's where can you play that conveys the most amount of information, but also on top of that inductive reasoning, oh, why they could have played there, why didn't they play there? Also comes into play. Does that yeah, make sense? Absolutely. All right.